By 1778, the tide of the American Revolution was changing in favor of George Washington's Continental forces. French aid had begun to pour in, and the British were shifting to a defensive war and removing troops from the Philadelphia area back to New York City. However, not everything was rosy for Washington. He had his nose bloodied by the British at the battles of Brandywine and Germantown, and his position as commander-in-chief was hanging by a thread. One of his greatest political foes, Horatio Gates, had won a decisive victory at Saratoga the previous fall. To cement his position as the commander of the American army, Washington had to achieve a military victory in the field of battle. In their retreat from Philadelphia, the British were moving slowly across New Jersey, hampered by the extreme heat. General Clinton, who was in charge of the forces, divided them into two divisions, one under Cornwallis and the other under the Hessian general Wilhelm Knipphausen, who'd proven himself hapless at the Battle of Trenton. They had 90 miles to go from Philadelphia to the waiting British ships at Sandy Hook, New Jersey. Now, Washington had been following Clinton's forces and decided it was time to strike. He sent his third army ahead under General Charles Lee, and Lee was a former British Army commander who, while serving directly under Washington, was also strongly critical of his superior's military capabilities. On June 28th, Lee struck near Monmouth Courthouse in east-central New Jersey. His target was the British commander Henry Clinton's rear guard. When he encountered the British at 10 that morning, Lee estimated that there were about 2,000 opposing troops, and he made a plan to hook around the British's right flank while General Anthony Wayne kept them engaged. Unfortunately, due to poor coordination of his troops, Wayne and Lee's armies ended up crossing each other and fighting on opposing flanks. Now, at the same time, Clinton, whose army was moving to the northeast, turned his troops around and headed back to the sound of gunfire. By 11.30, Lee found that his badly planned attack was crumbling, and he had to pull back in the face of the ever-swelling British force. By noon, Lee's forces had retreated two miles west to the Kerr House, with Cornwallis's redcoats dogging their steps. And while it had been a textbook example of an orderly retreat, Lee began to panic when he found that Washington troops were still several miles further to the west. Now, at 12.45, Washington finally encountered Lee, who had been retreating westward without a sign of the pursuing British. There was a terse exchange, and then Washington rode off to organize the battle that Lee had been assigned to handle. And Lee was left with Wayne to organize a rearguard action against the quickly arriving British. When the British did arrive, the well-trained British grenadiers and dragoons made pretty quick work of the colonial forces, and Lee and his men were again on the run. Now, while this was occurring, Washington did use Lee's delaying tactics to deploy artillery on Perrine Hill. And, as Lee was leaving the hedgerows and crossing Spotswood Middlebrook Bridge, with the grenadiers hot on his heels, Washington let loose with his artillery. And so the grenadiers were forced back to the hedgerow that they had just chased Lee out of. In the response, the British set up artillery themselves, and there was a two-hour artillery duel. Clinton was forced to disengage when the Americans set up guns on a hill overlooking his position, and Washington launched an infantry charge against the now-retreating British forces, inflicting pretty heavy casualties. As the sun set, both armies took a breather and they settled into camp. And during the night, the British slipped away and marched to Sandy Hook, where the Navy ferried them to New York. And while both sides incurred fairly heavy casualties, mostly due to the stifling summer heat, the battle was militarily inconclusive. Total British casualties were estimated at 1,134, and that comprised 304 dead, 770 wounded, and 60 prisoners. Washington reported his own casualties to be 370, comprising 69 dead, 161 wounded, and 140 missing. And remember, many of the wounded were suffering from heat exhaustion. The British were able to remove a bulk of their forces to the safety of the city, and Washington's troops had proven that they were capable of acting as a professional military force. For Washington, however, Monmouth was a major political victory. He was lauded for his actions as commander-in-chief by the Continental Congress, and he was able to remove Lee, one of his strongest critics, from his command. Washington then had him court-martialed on charges of disobeying orders, conducting an unnecessary, disorderly, and shameful retreat, and disrespect towards the commander-in-chief. Now, one of the legendary stories of the battle involves Molly Pitcher, a woman who's said to have aided the Americans during the battle. In some stories, she's said to have manned the guns when her husband became incapacitated. In others, she carried water to the gun crews. And today, a spring located near the artillery line has been identified as the site where the legendary Molly drew water. This week's game is Commands and Colors Tricorn, the American Revolution. It came out in 2017, and it was designed by Richard Borg, and its publisher was Compass Games. Let's go through the rules a little bit. There's quite a few of them, so it'll take a little bit of time, but hang in there and maybe this will help you learn how to play. 
First of all, let's go through the components. The battle map is divided into three sections, like all other Command & Colors games, and it's separated by these two dotted lines, giving each player a left flank, a center section, and a right flank. And where the dotted line cuts through a hex, the hex is considered to be part of both the flank section and the center section. Uh, now, there's two types of cards that are used in the game. There are command cards, and they're used to order troops on a side to move, do battle, or do something special. And units can only move or battle when given an order with a command card. And there are a set number of command cards that each player has in their hand throughout the game. For instance, it may say in the game that you have six command cards, so you'll always have that six. You'll play one every turn, and then you'll draw one at the end of the turn, and so you'll always have the six. There are also these combat cards. And these are a deck of cards that are specific for each side. There's a British set of combat cards, and there's a continental set of combat cards. And these represent special actions that can take place above and beyond what the command cards do. And the number of combat cards varies as they're used up and replenished, so you can have a real variable number of combat cards in your hand. Okay, there's also the battle dice. And these are specific to the commands and colors game. And they have six sides. Uh, one side has an infantry symbol. One side has a cavalry symbol. One side has an artillery symbol. One side has this saber symbol. And finally, two sides have the flag symbol. Now, there are two different types of units on the board. There's troops and there's leaders. And a leader block shows a mounted kind of general figure. Now, troops are set up with a strength of four. That's basically four blocks together and they share a single hex and act in unison to form a unit. Now in Vassal, this is simply represented by a number in the upper right-hand corner of the unit rather than showing each individual block. You can see the little colored band on the bottom of it. The different colors represent different types of units. A red band indicates elite units. A blue band indicates regular units. A green band indicates the light infantry units. Now, most cavalry units in this game are also considered light units, so they also have the green band. And then finally, there's artillery units, which are also green bands. A brown band is provincial units. Those are some units that are a little better than militia, but not quite up to the level of uh, your regular infantry. And they have some military training and experience. There's these yellow bands, and that's militia units. Those are volunteers drawn from the local area. And each unit has several numerical qualities associated with them. There's the number of moves and hexes they can do. And most of them can move either one, two, or three hexes. There's also a battle score, and this is the number of hexes to the enemy unit being targeted that determines the base number of battle dice rolled in combat. When we go through combat, it'll make a little more sense. If you do look at the battle scores, the number in parentheses is the base number of dice a unit rolls when it melees. In other words, the number of dice that are rolled when it combats into an adjacent hex. As you move out on hexes, these numbers will go down as the hex range increases. For example, if you have a uh, 3 in parentheses, followed by a 2, followed by a 1 for battle scores, then the unit's base number in melee, the adjacent hex, is 3 dice. In range combat, at a range of 2 hexes to the target, the unit's base number is 2 dice. And in range combat, at a range of 3 hexes to the target, the unit's base number is a single die. Now note, in this game, the number of blocks that a unit has does not have any direct effect on the combat strength. So a unit with a single block always retains the same combat strength as a unit at full strength or with four blocks. Each unit also has a morale strength, and that's the number of flags a unit can ignore when the unit does retreat, and it lists the number of hexes the unit has to retreat for each flag. And then there's a rally check, and that's the number of additional die a unit will roll when they're making a rally check. And I won't go through each individual unit here. There's about two dozen of them. So when we're playing the game, we'll kind of talk about each one as they come up. Now, the object of the game is to capture a set number of victory banners. Now, a victory banner is gained for several things. First, you can gain them for each enemy leader or enemy unit that's entirely eliminated in the game. You can also use it for capturing certain terrain hexes that are specified in the uh, specific scenario rules or accomplishing other battle-specific objectives. Now, many of the scenarios have rules for an opening cannonade, and what this means is that prior to the first turn in the battle, artillery units engage in range combat. So the indicated first side fires one gun, followed by the other side firing a gun, and then both sides alternate firing guns until all have been used. 
Now targets have to be within range and line of sight. And once artillery units have fired their opening cannonade, they can retire back two hexes towards their baseline or they can hold their position. Now, if they retire, they do have to move the full two hexes, but they are allowed to move through friendly units, leaders, and terrain that's not impassable. There are five phases in a turn, and the turn sequence involves playing a command card in phase one, ordering your units in phase two, uh, movement in phase three, uh, combat in phase four, and then the end of turn in phase five. And it's an I go, you go sort of situation. Now let's look at each one of the phases here in the turn sequence. So playing a command card. As I mentioned above, command cards dictate which sections of the battlefield's orders are issued and how many units can be ordered. And there are two types of command cards. There's section cards and there's tactic cards. Section command cards are recognizable by the representation of the battlefield on the lower half of the card. And they simply tell you how many units you can move and in what section. A tactic command card orders units and leaders across the battlefield in any section, and they can allow the ordered units and leaders to move and or battle in ways that are not normally allowed in the basic rules. Now note that when a card states for each command card you have, including this card, the number of units and or leaders a player may order is equal to the number of command cards in the player's hand, including the command card that's currently being played. So if you're playing with a six card hand, you could move six units. And the player can choose to discard a command card without taking action and draw a new card at the end of their turn just like normal. Phase 2 involves ordering units, and a unit can only receive one order from a command card in a turn, though they can receive actions from combat cards on top of their orders. And as I stated above, you order the number of units that is stated on the command card. Now a leader in the same hex as a friendly unit is considered attached and it only costs one order for a unit and its attached leaders to move and or battle together. However, if a unit and a leader were in separate hexes, it would cost two orders to move, say, each of them. Now also remember that a leader that's attached to the unit can be ordered to detach from that unit and move separately for the cost of one command. In phase three, you move, and movements are announced and made sequentially, one ordered unit or leader at a time, in any sequence that the player chooses. Now, as with all commands, a unit or leader can only be ordered to move once per turn, and it has to finish its movement before another unit can move. Also, units and leaders can move from one section of the battlefield to another. However, they can't move onto or through a hex occupied by a friendly unit, an enemy unit, or an enemy leader. Units can move onto a hex occupied by a friendly leader if the leader's alone in the hex. However, the unit has to stop and it cannot move any further that turn, and the leader is now considered attached to that unit. And obviously a unit or leader can't move onto or through a hex that has impassable terrain. Now you can find the number of hexes that a unit can move on the unit reference chart, and it varies from one to three. Most infantry can move one, cavalry and lights can move one or two, and leaders can move up to three. And whether a unit can melee at the end of a movement is uh, determined by the type of unit that's moving. Okay, let's go over combat. Let's start with some generalities. Combat occurs after all of a player's units have moved. Now, in this game, there are two types of fights or battles. Uh, there is ranged fire and there's melee combat. And to engage in ranged combat, a unit has to be within range. And we've kind of talked about that a little bit when we were going over specific units. And it also has to have a line of sight to the target unit or leader. Now, to melee, a unit has to be in an adjacent hex to the enemy unit or leader. And an ordered unit can only engage in one type of combat on a turn. They can't engage in, say, fire combat against a distant enemy and then engage in melee combat with an adjacent enemy. Also remember that single units only attack single enemies. So each unit resolves its combat separately. However, the player is free to engage in any sequence of combat that they desire. Now, ordered units are not required to fight, unlike some games. So even if they're adjacent to an enemy, they, they're not required to fight that enemy. Also in this game, units don't have facing, and a unit can attack an enemy in any direction. However, remember that range combat cannot be used in an adjacent hex, and only infantry and artillery units can engage in range combat. Cavalry units and lone leaders cannot engage in range combat. Also, units that are wishing to fire in range combat can't ignore an adjacent enemy unit, and they have to engage in a melee combat with a more immediate threat. 
Line of sight's pretty common sense in this game. It can be blocked by terrain, friendly, and enemy units. And in no case can ranged combat fire through hexes that contain any of these. To verify a line of sight, you just basically draw a line from the center of the attacking hex to the center of the target hex. And if that line passes through blocking terrain or another unit, then the line of sight is blocked and the attacker can't fire. Now, certain types of terrain like hills change line of sight a little bit, but again, those come up in very specific circumstances. Also note that line of sight can travel down the side of a hex, but it can't pass between hexes of blocking terrain, even if they're non-adjacent. And here's an example of that to make it a little more clear. The terrain that a target hex occupies doesn't block line of sight, though it can reduce the number of attack dice that an attacker can roll. If you were shooting into a unit that was in this forest hex, the forest hex would not affect line of sight, although it would reduce the attack roll. The base strength for an attack roll, or the number of dice you're going to roll, is denoted by the range, and then you add or subtract die modifiers to that attack due to specific situations. You then roll the attack die and score the hits. Now in the likely situation where you roll flags, you're going to cause the target to retreat. You do this after you've scored all the hits that, with the attack die. And once the defender retreats, they make a rally check. Again, we'll talk about retreats and rallies here in a little bit. Now let's go into attack die determination a little more specifically. You start with the base die number, which we've talked about due to range, and then you add or subtract the following modifiers. First, if it's a full strength unit in the combat, they get an additional die. And if a leader is attached to an infantry unit, now remember that's only an infantry unit, the unit rolls one additional die in range combat. And I note that because a leader attached to an artillery unit does not roll an additional die in range combat. You then add any command or combat card uh, combat additions, and then you reduce the number of die rolled in range combat by any terrain modifiers. So for example, you'd reduce the number of die rolled in uh, combat if the target unit was in, say, a forest or a town. You also reduce the number of die rolled by one if the unit attacking is an infantry unit that's moved that turn, and this will happen quite a bit. So if you move an attack, you reduce your die roll by one. Now, light infantry is kind of special here. They can actually move and fire without occurring a uh, minus one combat die penalty. Now, in combat, the attacker scores one hit for each unit symbol rolled that matches the target unit. So, for instance, if you rolled an infantry and you were attacking an infantry, the targeted unit would take a hit. Now, if you rolled an artillery and you were attacking an infantry unit, the infantry unit would not take a hit. And for each hit scored, one block or one number is removed from the target unit. And when the last block in an opponent's unit is removed, the unit is eliminated and you collect a victory banner. Now rolling sabers gives you kind of a wild card hit. Now rolling sabers do not hit with range combat. Sabers only apply hits when it's a melee combat. Now when a unit with an attached leader takes a hit in range combat, a leader casualty check must be made for each hit. And a leader which is not attached to a unit or alone in a hex can also be attacked in range combat. And we'll talk about killing off leaders here in just a second. Now melee combat has several key differences from the uh, fire or range combat. Now if you're attacking a cavalry or light infantry class unit, that unit that targeted unit can choose to retire and rally from the combat. And before the attacker rolls their attack die, the defender indicates that they're retiring from the combat. And the retiring unit has to be able to move back two hexes towards its own side of the battlefield. To do a retire from combat, the attacker rolls their dice as normal, but only unit symbols score a hit, and you disregard all flags and sabers. The defending unit then moves in and performs a normal rally check. Now, melee die modifiers are generally like range modifiers. However, unlike fire combat, light infantry that moves has to reduce the number of die by one, just like all other infantry when they move and melee. Now, most infantry gets a free hit when they score a saber when they roll their attack die rolls. However, militia infantry, uh, light infantry, including rifle and light cavalry units do not score hits on sabers when rolled during melee combat. Now, retreats are a major part of this game. You're going to have units retreating from battle almost more often than you are for uh, having them destroyed from the battle itself. Let's, so let's Let's break the retreat rules down. For each retreat flag rolled against a unit, the unit has to make its retreat movement towards its own side of the battlefield. So two flags will force the unit to make two retreat movements. 
and most units will retreat one hex for each flag. However, the uh, provincial and light cavalry units retreat two hexes. Militia infantry will retreat three hexes for each flag that's rolled against them. Now, a unit always has to retreat towards the player's side of the battlefield, and it cannot retreat onto or through a hex containing another unit. And detached leaders have to retreat along with the units that they're attached to. Now, terrain that's not impassable has no effect on retreat movement, or so they can move through, say, forest or hills or villages without any sort of uh, effect on the retreat movement. And when a unit cannot retreat, then one block has to be removed from the unit for each retreat hex of the movement that can't be completed. And after losses are removed from the unit, the unit must still make its rally check. Now a unit can choose to disregard flags rolled against it each time it's attacked, if certain situations apply. So a unit can ignore one flag when a leader's attached to the unit, provided the leader survives the leader casualty check, or the leader's alone in an adjacent hex. And a unit can ignore one flag when there are two supporting friendly units occupying any two adjacent hexes. Note that four adjacent units will not allow a unit to ignore two flags. And also certain units and terrain may also ignore certain numbers of flags. And these effects are cumulative up to two flags maximum. Now once a retreating unit makes its retreating move, then it has to do a rally check. And the rally check determines if the unit will stay in the battle or whether it will route and be eliminated from the game. To do a rally check, you roll the proper number of dice, and if a flag is rolled, the unit rallies and it remains. If no flags are rolled, the unit routes and is removed from the board and counted as a casualty for victory point determination. To determine the proper number of rally check dice to roll, the number of blocks currently in the unit is the base number of dice rolled for the rally check. And this is adjusted by a number of modifiers. For instance, a full strength unit, which has four blocks, gets an additional die. A unit with an attached leader gets another additional die. Guard infantry units get two die. Grenadier units get one die. Uh, provincial infantry units get one less die. And militia also get one less die. Now, when a cavalry melee combat causes an enemy infantry or artillery unit to retreat, the retreating unit also gets one less die. And this is kind of the charge rules for this game. Now, a key rule with the uh, rally is that a unit will always roll at least one die when it makes a rally check. Now, there's one final roll that has to be rolled here, and that is if a leader's attached to a unit that fails its rally check. In this case, you roll two die, and if a flag is rolled, the leader's not swept away with a unit, but it still has to retreat one, two, or three hexes from the hex where the unit failed its rally check. And it's up to the uh, owning player to determine how many hexes they want to move back. Now, if a flag is not rolled, the leader also panics along with the unit, and it's removed from the battlefield also. And when a leader's swept away with the unit and removed from the battlefield, before the leader's removed, all friendly units on adjacent hexes to the leader also have to make a rally check. Now, these rules get a little bit cumbersome here, but uh, it makes a little more sense when we actually play the game. Now, we talked a little bit earlier about light infantry and cavalry having the ability to retire from a melee. In other words, they're in a melee, they think they can't win, so they retire backwards. And we talked a little bit about the retreat that they do. Let's talk a little bit now about the rally that occurs with this. So at the end of a retirement retreat, the unit has to roll the rally check, and a retire rally check is just like a retreat rally check, except you add two additional die to the unit's rally check. Uh, so if the retiring unit rolls a flag, they stay in the battle. If they do not, they break, run, and rout, and they're removed from the battle, and the opponent gains a victory banner. Leaders attached to retiring units are treated just like leaders that are attached to retreating units. If the retiring unit is routed, the leader will make a check just like they did with the uh, retreating units to see if they're swept off the battlefield. If a unit retires and rallies, the attacking unit can still advance into the vacated hex, but the attacking unit cannot gain a bonus melee combat. We'll talk about that in a little bit, even if the unit that retired and rallies eliminated or failed its rally check. Couple notes about leader retreats. A leader can retreat through but not end their movement in a hex that contains a friendly unit or leader. And a retreating leader can stop the retreat on a hex with a friendly unit. However, it will not be attached to that unit. Now, if a leader's voluntarily moved off the board, it doesn't count for a victory point, but it can't be brought back on the board. Now, if a leader's left unattached to a unit, 
and it's attacked and forced to retreat, and the retreating path is blocked by uh, enemy units, the retreating leader can attempt to escape through one of the enemy occupied hexes. And as the leader moves through the enemy hex, the enemy unit rolls their normal number of combat die. And if any sabers are rolled, that leader's killed and removed from the game. If no sabers are rolled, the leader can re continue to retreat. Leaders in this game can be killed, and the key rule here is that the opposition player will always roll for a leader casualty check. Now in the case of attached leaders, when a leader is attached to a unit and the unit loses a block, there's a chance that the leader can be hit, and the opposition player will make the leader casualty check by rolling two battle dice for each hit. And to hit the leader, two saber symbols have to be rolled. Now if an attached leader's unit is eliminated, leaving the leader alone, then the opposition player will make a leader casualty check with one battle die, and to hit and eliminate the leader, one saber has to be rolled. If a leader's not hit, the leader can retreat one, two, or three hexes. It's up to the owning player. And when a, the leader is on a friendly baseline hex and has to retreat, the leader can retreat off the battlefield. However, a leader that retreats off the battlefield does not give the opponent a victory banner. Now an easy rule to forget here is that if a leader unit is eliminated, the leader block is removed, and a unit in the same hex as the leader and all friendly units on adjacent hexes to the eliminated leader also have to make rally checks. Now a leader alone in a hex can be targeted in combat, and whether ranged or melee combat, the attacking unit rolls its normal combat die, and if two saber symbols are scored, the leader's eliminated. If the leader's not eliminated, it again has to move back the one to three hexes, and the attacking unit can move into the vacated hex. To target a leader alone in a hex in ranged combat, the attacking enemy unit rolls its normal ranged battle die, and two saber symbols rolled will score a hit and eliminate the leader. So in this case, this is the one exception to the rule where units can actually hit with a saber in range combat. A couple of additional combat actions that can occur in this game. First, if an infantry or cavalry unit causes an enemy unit to vacate its hex during a melee, the attacker has the option of moving into that hex. The only exception to this is defending units that are battling back and they can't take ground. We're going to talk about that in just a second. If the unit that takes ground is next to another enemy unit after moving into the vacated hex, they may make a second melee attack. And note that moving onto the original enemy hex is counted as movement, and the attacker still subtracts that one melee die penalty. And this happens for a single unit only once per turn. And while it can continue to take ground if it defeats a second unit, it gets no further bonus attacks. Also, a defending unit can battle back after a melee. So if a defending unit survives an enemy attack and is not forced to retreat, they can battle back against the attacker in the same round. If a unit's forced to retreat and ends up next to an enemy unit, they can't battle back. And the, basically what happens here is the defender and attacker switch sides, with the defender attacking normally. Now if the defender is attacked by several enemy units, they can battle back against each one separately. And during a melee battle back, the unit calculates its base number, additional die, and die reductions in the same manner as normal melee, though they can't take ground after combat or make a bonus combat. Now, after the defending player's battle back, the melee stops. That is, you can't ever have a battle back against a battle back. Finally, the last phase of the turn is the end of turn, and after completing all movement, combat, and retreats, all command cards that have been played are discarded and new command cards are drawn. And combat cards played are also discarded, and new combat cards are drawn if directed through the actions of the round. And you'll see this, certain cards will indicate that you can draw more combat cards. And remember, drawing combat cards is not automatic. Now, there's no limit to the number of combat cards that a player can have in their hand, and they're played when indicated, and more than one can be played during a turn if applicable. They're very specific, so again, we'll talk about combat cards when we actually go through playing a game. And combat cards are always played when indicated by the specifics of the card. And some cards can be played out of turn, some can be played during an opponent's turn, or in reaction to one of the opponent's action or card play. Anyway, that's kind of it. Quite a bit of rules here for this game. This is this is a little bit heavier game than a lot of the other Commands and Colors games. Tricorn and Napoleonics are probably the two most complex of the Commands and Colors games. I mean, they're still not super complex war games, but relative to, say, Ancients or um, um, Battle Cry, they are a little more complex. So we're ready to play the Battle of Monmouth here. And if you want to play along with Vassal, go ahead and load it up. I can wait. <laughs> Let's all go to the lobby. 
Okay, let's look at the special rules for this particular game. Um, both sides have six command cards and four combat cards, which I've already drawn. And the British will move first. And to win the game, you're going to have to get nine victory banners. A couple other special rules. There's an opening cannonade, which we'll do here in just a second. Also, the British player gets two temporary victory banners if they can uh, control any of these hexes in uh, Perrine Farm Ridge. Also on Perrine Farm Ridge, there's a Molly Pitcher rule. If a uh, artillery unit that's that's stationed up there, a Continental one, loses a point, then they're able to regain a point at the beginning of a turn, and they can do that once during the game. There's a hedge here which acts as a friendly unit in in re in regards to uh, in regards to the uh, retreats, so that can kind of save these guys from being forced back. Also, there's the the streams are fordable. And so you have to stop when you get to the stream if you're moving, but uh, you can keep moving in the next turn. So that's what we got. Let's go ahead and close that out. Now we're going to go ahead and do the opening bombardment. There has to be line of sight, and that's going to be a problem for the Continentals, because this guy over here has Combs Hill in the way. Uh, Prime Farm is too far off. So basically it's only leaving two British units that can fire during the opening cannonade and I think I'm going to go ahead and fire at these guys here. So we'll start with uh, this one here firing against these uh, regulars here and uh, I like to use the reference sheet a lot. Um, I do that pretty much with all of the commands and colors games. It's, there's just so many different units and everything's a little bit different so it's this kind of helps me out a lot and I'm not an expert at this game so if you see a lot of problems go ahead and let me know down below. It'll sure help improve my play. But hopefully if you're new to the game like I am, you can kind of watch this video and maybe feel like you understand it a little more and get started with it. Okay, the enough yammer in here. So this is going to be one die here uh, for this cannon. And they have a total of four. They're at full strength. So that gives them two dice that they can fire. And they get an infantry and infantry, so they don't do anything. And then this guy's going to fire down here. And let's see, two dice again. A flag and a cavalry. So normally the flag would apply and send this guy backwards, but he's got uh, two friendly units. The hedge is acting as a friendly unit on one side, and he's got a friendly unit here. I don't know if two hedge units count as a friendly or not. I guess I'll count it that way just to make the hedge seem kind of important, like it was in the real battle. So nothing happened there, essentially. Now the British can go. So let's look over our British cards. Um, oh, I could withdraw those two those two cannons, but I'm not going to. Issue one, the bombards, kind of an idea. I'd kind of like to wait on that. All units and lone leaders in one section are ordered and may move one hex. Units that may, may not battle. Hey, that sounds like an idea here. Okay. We're going to play this card, this... Dress ranks card. I guess it just went here. Dress ranks. So I'm going to be able to move all the units in a section. And um, then they can't fight. And let's see. Units that do not move may engage in range combat when not adjacent to an enemy unit or leader. And they may not melee. So, okay. I'm going to just, yeah, that sounds like a pretty good deal here. All units and lone leaders in one section. That's that's a lot. Um, okay, he can move now. I don't think this guy can move because that is a unit that is attached. Well, it says all units and lone leaders. I guess, okay, they can. And they can only move one hex, but still not a bad deal. Okay, and then at the end of this turn, I draw one combat card. So I can draw another combat card. And we'll draw one here. Infantry range bonus, training, reform, and infantry range bonus. Okay, that's, I think, it. And then we need to bring our command card up. And that is it for the British uh, turn. Okay, the Continentals get to go. And infantry retire and reform. Okay. Um, I 
I think what we will do is I'm going to try a line command. Well, I could try to fire down on these guys. Um, I've got two line command cards. Issue one order to each unit in adjacent hexion. Units and leaders may only move one hex. The ordered unit line may extend across one of more sections. Okay. I could do this, guys. Or I could line command these guys. I'm going to line command these guys. I'm going to go ahead and draw my card here. Okay. And then I'm going to get these guys into uh, position. Now, this is one order to each unit in adjacent link contiguous hexes. They can only move one hex. Okay. But I can still, I think I can still fire at the end of that. Now, it doesn't say I can't, so I'm going to go ahead and try that. And I am going to fire down on... Uh, these guys down here. So this regular will fire. He's got two, two, one, two, two, one. He can hit this guy. I'm going to try to take that cannon out. That's really what I want to do. So I've got one, um, I've got one die for this regular here, plus a second for being at full strength. So we'll do two at that artillery unit. And I get an infantry and a saber. Now sabers don't now sabers don't work on fire combat, so that's nothing. Uh, this artillery will go, and it's going to be two, two, one. I will do it again. I've got two, a cavalry and a flag. Okay. Now. Cavalry doesn't work. The flag won't work either because there's two adjacent units, so he can't do anything. And then here we're going to do another same thing here with two dice, a flag and a flag. Okay, that time he has to take a flag. So he moves back one, and then he rolls for a rally. And i got to check my rules here. Here I just went over them all. Okay, okay, got it, yeah. Okay, so he starts with four. He gets four dice to roll. Plus he's at full strength, so that's another one. So five dice. And there is a flag. Okay, so we're good. So he's, he just made it back. We can discard this. And uh, that is the end of the, uh, of the Continental Turn. So we go to the British turn. What are we going to do with the Brits? Um, okay, I know what we're going to do. We're going to do this again. And we're going to use this. Um, I am going to use this uh, training, and I'm gonna. That's gonna keep my battle dice up. So let's go ahead and close that. So these guys are all gonna move one, three, four, five, one, two. Oh, I can't do that. Hold on a second. This guy's got to move back. He can't. I've got to stay in the same section. I think. Oh, link contiguous hexes. Oh, okay, we're good. These are all linked contiguous hexes, so they're they're good to go. Ah, I could have picked those Highlanders up. Okay, now it doesn't say I can't move, but I can't I can't engage in range combat. Only infantry can remain in melee combat. Okay, so we're gonna discard that. We're gonna discard that. We can fight at full strength, and we are gonna try to move these guys out of the hedgerow. So we're going to start with this guy, and he gets a, uh, he gets, let's see here, I'm slow with this, two, because it's it's a melee combat, so two dice, 
plus one for being at full strength. So three dice. And we get a cavalry, infantry, and a flag. Okay, so it takes a hit. We can ignore a flag because we're um, two away, I think. I think the, let's see, uh, hedge trainer treated as a hedge. And let's see what's going on with hedges here. Double check. Hedge counts as one friendly support for from range combat. Okay, so the hedge doesn't help you any. If it's if it's if it's melee combat, so this guy's going to move back, and he can move back one, and he will move back to Lee, and we'll just attach that guy there. And let's see, cavalry, infantry, and a flag. So we had one flag there, so we're going to check to see. Basically, he's got to make his saving throw, and his save is anything special. He's not at full strength. He's got three dice. Now he's got an attached leader. Should I count? I don't think that would count as... A, well, I'm going to let him have the attached leader. That's the one thing I don't like about this game. There's always a lot of little... On commands and colors, you always have a lot of little exceptions and everything. But that's okay. It's still a fun game. Flag. Okay, he got his flag. Okay. Light. Uh, the artillery can't melee. The... Regular unit can fire here, and we have a, f uh, let's see, that's two. Let's see, yeah, two with regular infantry, and he gets a three die. So we got three dice, cavalry, flag, and cavalry. Okay, the flag means he moves back one. Oh, and this guy's going to take, he's going to move into that. Okay, and then and we could really we could fight again. I don't think I well, let's see what happens. Let's just see what happens. Okay, no wait, you can't with those guys. Okay. You can only do that with light and cavalry units that you can keep fighting. I think. Let's see here. Yeah, we'll just we'll just stay put. Okay, that guy, we're going to move into that position, but uh, this guy has a flag against him, and he's got four, five. He gets a flag. Okay, Grenadiers. Now, Grenadiers get three dice, plus one is four dice, and... Oh, regular infantry... No, they don't ignore flags. Okay. Four dice. I'm talking to myself. Flag, infantry, cavalry, cavalry. Okay. So we're going to take the hit. And then the flag will move in. And then this guy gets to roll uh, three dice. Infantry, artillery, and he gets a flag. Okay. That guy can't do anything. I think that's it for the... Uh, that's it for the... British. Okay, let's do that. Now the Continentals can go. Let's see. Bayonet attack, line pro bright, line volley. Yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to counterattack. And we should have used one of these rallies. I'm just looking here. Infantry retire and reform. An infantry unit being attacked in melee may retire and reform. Only infantry symbols score a hit. All other symbols are ignored. Move the unit two hexes back towards its baseline. And no rally check. So it lets, basically it lets everybody retire that's an in infantry. Okay. Counterattack for a quick step. Each command card includes... Okay. We are going to counterattack... And this lets us move all the ones that are together one. So two, three, four. They have to be contiguous. Five, six, seven, eight. Nope, he can't move. And this guy can move. Okay, that's it for the uh, pretty simple for the continental, but that's okay. We can kind of move them in, in, into position here. Okay, Brits get to go. 
uh, we need to get a card. And advance right. A line volley. Let's try that out. And we'll try an infantry ranged bonus. Okay, so the line volley will attack. Let's see, issue one order to each unit infantry um, in adjacent link contiguous hexes. So again, I've got all these guys here, and I can use the infantry range. They can do some damage here. Um, okay. So I have to fire. Oh, I can't fire for those guys. Um, okay, well, let's see what we can do here. We can do something with this. So we can fire with, no, he can't fire because he's got a guy next to him. He can fire. He can fire, I think. Uh, let's see, a guard. The guard are three, two, one, three, two, one. Nope. The grenadiers can fire. Three, two, one. He can fire. Let's just uh, put some battle markers on it. Attacker marker. He can fire. Attacker marker. I think he can fire. Attacker marker. Uh, three, two, one. This guy can fire. Attacker marker. The Highlanders are there. Two, two, one. They can fire. And that guy can't. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so let's start with our cannon here. And the cannon is going to be at one. It's going to be two, two, one. Does a hill do anything? Attack from a lower level, ignore one flag. So, except for artillery. Oh, okay. So, we are going to go... Uh, this guy can fire with one plus a, a second for being a... for being full strength. So, two. Flag and sabers. Can't fire... Let's see. Cannons... Sabers rolled in melee will score a hit with the cannon. So, they take a, that... And uh, take a hit, and then a flag will be... Can you ignore your flag? Nope. Okay, oh, he can't ignore because he's got guys on either side. So... And... Okay, that's, I think, his thing. Then uh, this guy can go. Now, he's got the plus two additional die. And a Grenadier has a... Uh, nothing. Okay, I don't think a Grenadier actually... A Grenadier is going to be 3, 2, 1. 3, 2, 1. He's at full strength, so that puts him at 2. And he gets two additional dies, so that puts him at four. So we go flag, artillery, artillery, infantry. God, oh, could have used that. I've got to take the infantry. And then the flag, he doesn't have two units there. So he has to move back uh, one hex. Um, yeah, he has to move back a hex. Now then, this guy has to make his save and man i'm slow at this um let's see a save he's not at full strength okay he's not attached to a leader he's not a guard grenadier okay so he just gets three dice he gets a flag so he saves okay those guys have gone uh this cannon can go and i'm going to fire here so that's going to be uh one and two, that's two dice. Gets an artillery and a flag, okay. And this guy has 
two units near him so he can ignore that flag. Okay, over here we have a Highlander. Highlanders get a 2-2-1 two, two, and they get two dice. I think it's just going to be two dice there. Oh, they get an infantry bonus, so four dice. Um, actually, it's going to be, th let's go back, it's going to be three dice because this guy's in, in forest. So three dice, saber, cavalry, saber. Now, sabers don't count, and cavalry doesn't count, so nothing there. Okay, that, I think, is the turn. Britso gone. Let me get him another card here. And we will discard these, and we will go to the American side. Okay, the Continentals go. Um... We could advance on the right. Again, I could use those guys. We could do another line volley. A bayonet. Oh, okay. Let's do the bayonet attack. And let's just go right here. Issue an order up to three infantry units. Will you do these guys? They can move two X's and still battle in melee with no movement reduction. And ordered units may not engage in range combat. Okay, that's fine. We can use these three guys here. And they're going to melee. So this guy gets to go first, and he gets a uh, he gets two dice, plus he gets uh, one for the leader. So he gets three dice against these this regulars. Flag, artillery, and flag. So two flags this guy takes. Now he can ignore one flag, but he has to go back one. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna move into that. And um, let's see, he has to move one. What else was I going to say? Oh, that puts him in a bad position there. Oh, he's got a rally. Okay. So he gets four, five. Should make it. Yeah, makes it. Okay, this guy gets to go. And he's going to fire with uh, two dice plus one is three dice. And he gets a cavalry flag and an infantry. So this guy takes a hit. Um, he's got two guys on the either side of him, so he's okay there for ignoring the flag. And then finally, this guy's going to go against the Grenadiers. And again, he's got uh, he's got two dice. That's all he's got. He gets artillery and an infantry, so these guys take a hit. And that is it for that turn. Okay. Get him another card. Should have used the line command. I don't know what I was thinking. Okay. Brits get to go. Whoops. I didn't want to do that. It's easy to flip these guys. Okay. Flip them. Um, let's see. Assault center. Let's do an assault center. And in this section, I can move for each command card you have, including this one, issue one uh, unit. So I have six cards in the center. So we are going to use this guy, this guy, this guy. I'll stay put and attack this guy. And this guy, let's see, that's, oh, I'll, I really want to try to get Lee out of there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that's six. So I'll try to go with these rifles here, and I will try to go after Lee. Let's start with a, well, let's start attack on, let's run an attack on that cannon there. So that's three, a uh, two, I'm sorry, two, two, okay. So he's got two dice. He's at full, so that's three dice. But the guy's on a hill, so that's two dice. Or no, ignore a flag? Is a hill a flag? Yeah, lower one flags. Or ignore one flag, okay. So. So, like I said, we got two, three. Okay, three dice. 
Cavalry, flag, cavalry. Okay, nothing. Okay, this guy goes with a 2-2, two, two, and he's at full, so that's 3. 3 dice, sabers, infantry, sabers. Now, so we take uh, 3 hits. Okay, take hit, take hit, take hit, and this guy is eliminated. And it leaves Lee. Now they had three hits. So I got to take, I get to roll three, I get to roll two dice three times. I get a flag flag, nope. Flag cavalry, nope. And artillery cavalry. So Lee makes it. Okay, then. Okay, so for attacking uh, Lee, who's unattached to a unit, basically this guy can roll and he just has to uh, roll two sabers. So we will roll. Let's see, he gets uh normally a regular gets a two. And so he just rolls two. So he just has to hit Saber Saber. So he doesn't. But this forces Lee back three. I'm gonna move him back two. You can do that at the Okay. Let's uh delete that. Okay, this guy's gonna attack here, these grenadiers. Now grenadiers fight with a three. And let's see, nothing. I don't think he gets anything else. So the three flag, cavalry, and flag. Now they do have to take both flags, two. And then we're going to roll for the rally. And uh, they're at full strength, so they get a plus one. So they get four and five. Five die. Did they get a flag? Yeah, they did. Okay. And that's the Grenadier went. Okay. Oh, I forgot. I had six. So this guy, and then I said, I think this guy could go, and then this this light cannon could do. So he's got a uh, one, and he gets two. But it's just this guy. And then um, forest, do they roll a, ignore a die, or do they roll ignore a uh, flag? They ignore one flag, so nothing there. And then the uh, artillery go two, two, one. Okay, so one, let's say at full strength, so they get two dice. Saber, saber. And that's enough to uh, do some damage. Take hit, take hit. Okay, that's it. I think that's the whole. We can discard that, and then we can go to the uh, continental uh, American side. And um, I could have added dice to the rally check, but that's okay. We're gonna we can save these save these rally check bonuses till later in the game when you're when the units are really starting to get wiped out. Okay, let's see here. Advance right, salt right. Pro bright. Well, we're gonna have to get the right side of the battle here. So, um, for each command card, okay, that would move six. Might want to do that. Let's go ahead and do that, and uh, we'll move. First of all, we can move Lee into position. One, two, three. I will move Lee into position here. And uh, he can't fight, but he can support this guy. And then this guy can go. Let's see, I, I can move a total of six. So we'll move green. We'll move this guy. And then this guy can go one, two uh, hexes. And that's everybody on the right side. So. Okay, there we go. Now this guy can fire, and uh, he's firing down to a two. Okay, he's at full strength, so he gets two, three. Flag, saber, and flag. Okay, saber doesn't do anything, but the two flags will. One, two. Um, this guy can't ignore any flags, I don't think. The hedgerow counts as... Oh, yeah, you can, because the hedgerow. This counts as one. 
two. So yeah, that's two. So he can ignore one flag. And then he attempts to make a rally. Does he have a rally card? Yeah, let's keep it. Okay. And he's got four die. He's at full, so that's five. Oh, he didn't get a flag. So you know what this means? This means this guy goes here because he uh, he was unable to rally, so he's out of action. Okay, then this uh, this uh, artillery can go, and I'm going to fire down on these grenadiers. Now I'm not at full, so it's going to be two, two, one, plus one for having green attached. I think that helps. I'm I always have to check that. Oh, infantry. Only infantry. Okay, so a leader will only help an infantry unit out. It can't help an artillery. That's right. Okay, so I guess you just get one die. And it's an artillery, so nothing. And then this regular 2-2-1. Two, two, and he just has one die. So infantry, which is enough to take him down. That first infantry shot does hurt. That brings you down quite a bit, so... Okay, that's it for the uh, Continentals. They brought a British unit down right in the prime of its life. Okay, go to the Brits. They need to pick up a card. Ah, the advanced center. Yeah, I, I like to keep pushing that center. So we will do that. One issue to three units and or leaders in the center section. Um... We will do these. I gosh, I like to keep these guys together. Okay. One, two, and three. Oh hell, let's use let's do the artillery. Let's do the artillery. So this guy's I'm gonna have these grenadiers fight. I'm gonna have uh, this guy fight and this guy act. It's three units in the center section, so attacker marker. Okay. And we will try to shoot this guy. So I've got two die to hit him. An artillery and a flag. Okay. He can ignore a flag, though, so that doesn't do anything. This guy will shoot two, two, one. So that's two dice, because he's at full strength. Infantry and artillery. Take a hit. And since he took a hit, I check for two sabers. Nope. Okay, so the... So Green makes his... Uh, Mad Anthony Green makes his uh, saving throw. And then this guy's going to melee. And with a... And I think he melees. He's a grenadier, so he melees at... Three. And he gets a flag, flag, and infantry. Okay. So first of all, we're going to take their hits. Take hit. Okay. We roll to see if uh, Lee was was killed. Flag and infantry, no. Okay, Lee's with them, so we can ignore one flag, but we've got to move back one. And then we make our rally. And with a rally, they're not at full strength, so they get two. They do have a leader, so they get plus one die, so they get three die. Um, and I'm going to use this guy here. Rally check bonus, so five die. And there's our flag. Okay, so they, they rally. Uh, this guy will move forward. No, he won't, because I need something to bring in. I need to come in strong here, because he's going to get shot up. Okay, that is it for the uh, Brits. We go to the next turn. Pick up one of these. Okay, inspired leader on the right. Oh, we've still got those right. Everybody's on the right here. Um, let's do this. Pro Bright, and this will let us draw. Actually, this is going to let us draw another card. So we'll draw our 
Continental card. Come on, get out of the way here. Okay, there's our Continental. I'll draw us there. Okay. Okay, two units can apply. So let's, again, we're going to try to shoot this uh, artillery here. Um, actually, I'm going to move him here. That's going to be one. And then two, I'm going to fire with these guys. So it's two, two, one. He gets one for the... Uh, for green, which is two. Okay, so he gets he gets uh, one for being a unit. He gets two for being at full strength, and he gets three die. He gets an infantry, a flag, and a cavalry. Okay, he's attached one and two, so he does. He ignores the flag. And that's it. Okay, discard. Okay, going with the Brits. Where you at, guy? Pull a card here, and oh, and I oh, I drew my card. Okay, I did that already. And I'm gonna play my reform. And I'm going to play my advance center. Okay, I'll... So reform. After playing a command card, I can try to attempt to reform a unit. And I roll a die. And if they're adjacent to leader, they're not. And a flag or unit symbol rallies a block back to its unit. Okay. So I'm going to try to, re to rally those grenadiers. I get to roll one die. And if I get an infantry, no, if I get a flag or an infantry, then he re-rolls. Okay, he got a cavalry. So, nope. Okay, then we're going to move forward with three units. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit, going to try to attack again. I'm going to move him up and fire. And he's firing. And I'm going to try to fire again with this guy. Discard. Okay. Two, two, one. But he gets a plus one there. So this is two dice. And this guy can ignore, ignore a flag because he's in the woods. But he gets a saber. That's a hit. Okay. This guy... Is at full strength, so he gets one for just being him. He gets two for being at full strength, but he subtracts one because he's firing at the end of movement. So he just gets a one, two, one. Okay. And he gets cavalry. Okay, and then this guy goes, we'll get a one, two. He gets an artillery and a flag. Okay, so takes another hit. And the flag won't matter because the, the the hill. Okay, there we go. Now the Americans go. Um, and I'm going to use the reform. And continue to probe the right. I think we eventually get these guys moved out. So the reform on this regular here. And he's got a leader, so he gets two die. And he gets a saber and an infantry, which the infantry was was that worked. So we can recover a hit and discard, and then we can probe the right again. And two units. So he will fire with one die. Gets a flag, okay, but flag won't matter. And then this guy is going to go two, two, one. But he gets two more, so he gets three die. Cavalry, artillery, and flag. Okay, the artillery hits. And the flag, he's protected. So, yeah, a little bit. Brits go. British turn. 
and we got okay a quick step that's that's i like to see that so we are going to play that one and move everybody forward each command card you have oh that's including this card issue one so six guys can go oh they have to be contiguous okay they are contiguous because i can go around this way so six of these guys can go Oh, they can move one hex normal, more than their normal rate. Okay. And only infantry can engage in... Okay, so he has to stop. One, two, three, four, um, five, and six. Okay. And um, these two can these two can fight. Okay, there we go. So this guy's going to fight, and this guy's going to fight a melee. Actually, this is kind of good because we're kind of pushing Lee back against these guys. He can go here, but then he's going to start losing those guys. Okay, so these Grenadiers are going to go with a three. Uh, they're not a full, though, so they get three die. Minus one, they moved, so two die. Cavalry and a flag, okay. And I think we can ignore a flag because of Lee. Oh, we don't. Okay. Now wait, let's see. Retire. Yeah, I think he can ignore. Okay, I think we can ignore that one. And then we've got a, this guy is going to fire. He's got. A regular, so it's two plus one is three. Flag, infantry, infantry, okay. So takes a hit, takes a hit, he's down to one. And then there was a flag, which we can ignore. But Lee, we've got to roll two sets of two, and if we get two sabers, he's gone. Nope, he got sabers, but not on each one. Okay. There's that one. We go to the Americans and the Continental Army. Steal a march. For each command, you included this issue. I like that one. I like that one a lot. Okay, for each command card you have, and that's six, including this card, you can issue one order to one unit. An ordered unit or leader may move up to three hexes, even through friendly units, and ignore terrain movement restrictions, but impassable features are impassable. Okay. I like that. Uh, we are going to move this guy here. That's one. Two. Doesn't say anything about not being able to fight, so I'm going to say... One and uh, two, three. Uh, we will. M I'm not going to mail. I'm going to use those guys up here. Four, five, and. Six. Okay. So I'm going to shoot. Uh, shoot, shoot. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll start with the melees. Oh, and then at the end I dropped one combat card. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw our combat card here. Watch me get the wrong side's combat card. Okay, these guys are going to... Oh, shoot, I've got... Okay. We'll say one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll just say these four, five... Yeah. We'll say these three and those two cannons. Okay. Regular goes against regular. 
He's meleeing. He moved, so that's a minus one. And um, let's see. That's a uh, so that's two three. Flag, flag, flag. Oh wow. Okay. So we can ignore one flag. So that's two flags. They've got to go back. And um, I will move in. We will see if uh, he's got three dice that he can fight with. I think, let's see, no, no attached leader. Uh, so this guy moved him back, and so he has to roll three dice. And he gets a flag. Okay, so he makes it. Okay, this rifle unit is going to be two. He's meleeing against. He's get, He's at full strength, so that's three. He moved, though, so that's uh, two. Wait, yeah, let's see. He, he's, he moved one, two. Hold on. Rifle gets two, and then three for that, two. Okay. Artillery and flag. Okay, the grenadier has to move back and as a grenadier he gets a does he get the flag? oh he ignores a flag okay he can ignore the flag so he's fine okay lee and his guy can go and uh, it's going to be uh, a two three sabers artillery and a flag so saber counts uh that's a take a hit and a flag. Uh, regular would take a flag, so moves back one and rolls three, and he gets eliminated, so he leaves the battle. Okay, then this guy's gonna go two, two, one, one. Okay, there, so he's, he's gonna hit one, but he's got an extra guy, so that's two. Saber hits and artillery hits. So take a hit, take a hit, and then this guy goes two, two, one. Okay, I and mean, he's at full, so he gets two. Cavalry and saber. Another saber hits, takes hit. And man, that hurt those guys. So not a good round for the Brits. Okay. Oh, this Grenadier didn't get pushed back, so he's going to fight back against Lee. So he can fight back at uh, three. Flag, artillery, artillery, and that doesn't do anything because Lee will absorb that flag. Plus, there's he's got friends, so. Okay, Brits get to go. I need to use up this guy. I need... Uh, let's see, draw two combat cards. So let's go ahead and draw our combat cards. I'm drawing them early. And uh, am I short? Let's see. One, two, three, four. Oh, I'm short here too. That's okay. So one and two. We'll use those next round. That's okay. Roll a die for each, com each command card you have. So that's going to be six. And for each one you roll, then you end. So let's order our six here. We get flag, infantry, infantry, sabers, infantry, artillery. So, um, oh, okay, they get to battle with one die. Okay, let's see, flag, for each flag you... Okay, so for the flag, I'm going to... Oh, who am I going to fight with? I'm going to move him. Oh, wow. Hold on a second. Let's activate this guy. Uh, do I have an artillery? Yes. Okay. There's the artillery. Uh, now then, I get a flag that's a free choice. And I get one additional die. Okay. Okay. Well, I think I'll attack with this guy. I will uh, move this guy.
And I can't move and attack with him, so that's... That, wait, that was my... Okay, this is my artillery. I can't move, okay. I can... Let's see, the flag I've used, the flag I've used the artillery. I can move two infantry. I can move three infantry. Okay. This guy I'll activate. And... Um, This guy I'll activate, and this guy I'll activate, so he will, and he'll be attacking. Okay, let's see here. I'm going to probably try to push this guy back first. So let's fire with this guy. Okay, so he's got uh, two against these guys. So with two, um, does he need any pluses? Nope. Okay, two dice. Artillery, artillery, he does nothing. Okay, these grenadiers will do the same thing. Uh, grenadiers have a three. Sabers, artillery, and cavalry. Okay, so he hits, does a hit. I guess the infantry, the uh, artillery will go at point blank range. So three plus one. So they have four. Flag, flag, cavalry, flag. Okay, one, two. He can, can he, nope, he cannot ignore. So one, two, three, and then uh, gonna roll three dice. Sabres, sabers, cavalry. He does not get any flags, so this guy is now routed from the battle. And then finally, this guy's gonna go three, three, let's see, is that three? No, two. I'm sorry. Two, two. Okay, so he's going to hit with two. A flag and an infantry. That's enough to send this guy. So that guy's eliminated. And that is the end of that round. Okay, the Americans go. They've got six. Line volley. I think we'll do this and discard. Oh, we need to shuffle here for that okay line volley is issue one order to each unit in adjacent contiguous hexes okay these guys and they can fight with one additional die i think i lost that one on the last one it didn't give any additional die that's okay okay so these guys are all contiguous um, this guy, I'm going to move in. Uh, can he fire? No. These guys can fire. This guy can fire. Um, these guys can fire. Attacker. Attacker. I can move these guys. And those guys can move since they are in the contiguous thing. So, okay, everybody's moved. We'll do rifle to. We're gonna try to take out. Yeah, I got. Oh, I can't fire. I gotta. I gotta go against those grenadiers. Okay, so the rifle guys have a. In the next hex, they're two. So this guy gets two, three against the grenadiers. Flag, infantry, and flag. Okay, so they take a hit. Uh, they ignore one flag, but they've got to move back one for a flag. And then we do a rally check. Oh, and I get one more dice here. What was my a flag? Okay, they move back two. They got two left. Flag, flag. They make it. Okay. Uh, this Lee's unit will go, and they're going to fire. They get... Uh, Two, two. They're firing with two. Plus Lee gives them three. Plus the card gives them four dice. Saber, artillery, flag, and flag. Okay, so they get two flags. They're on the hedgerow, so they can... The hedgerow saves them a little bit. So they can only take one flag. We then roll to see if they can rally. They've got three points to rally. And they get their flag. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and try to fire at this guy. So we've got 
2211 and uh, he gets a plus one for being full strength so that's two plus the card gives him three artillery flag and flag so he takes two more flags he's got two guys on his side he ignores them because he's got two guys here ignore one flag and he's a grenadier so he ignores his second flag uh, then this guy's gonna fire two two one he's at full strength so he gets uh, two he gets three dice flag infantry flag okay now this guy has to take the two flags I think let's see how much yeah you go back one okay one two he's back with Cornwallis and um, let's see oh he's down to one oh but Cornwallis is going to give him one, so he gets a cavalry infantry. He does not make it, and so he is eliminated. Things are beginning to heat up a little bit here. We're starting to lose guys every round. Okay, Brits get to go. Um, we got our ambush. Play this card after opponent declares a melee, but before. And this is where this is not a great game for solo play. Um, Let's discard this, and we are going to give an infantry ranged bonus, and I am going to... Um, advance left, advance right, scout. I'm going to do my scout. I think that'll give me some... Give me a little bit of... There we go. Okay, so we can move one unit in each... Uh, section and we draw two command cards and select one okay let's uh, do that really while i'm thinking of it command or a combat card we got either leader initiative or we've got rally check bonus okay yeah let's get rid of that we're going to use that this leader thing will help us out here next round we can use a leader to move an extra unit that's okay. Okay, so we've got that. So we need three guys. And range combat will give us two. Okay. Well, I'm going to fire again with this guy. Now he's at full strength. And he's in this section. So we're going to say he's at a, a one plus a one plus a two. So four dice against this uh, guy on the hill. Flag cavalry, okay, there's enough. So he eliminates the artillery unit. And then um, this guy's gonna try to blast Lee out. So he's got he's at full, so it's two, two, one, so it's gonna be four again. Sabres, artillery, sabres, artillery. That's enough. Okay, so this guy's eliminated. Now let's see if Lee. There were one, two, oh, four different ones. So we get a roll two sabers for each of those. Let's see, two, three, four. Nope, okay. So Lee survives. And that was that guy. And then over here, not much we can do. Ah, let's just move a guy. That's about all we can do over here. Ah, hold on. Let's move gray. Cornwallis. Let's move Cornwallis up to the Grenadiers. Okay. Discard and discard, because Cornwallis was on the border. Okay, now then the Americans will go. I'll play this one. I'll play the Liberty or Death. And with Liberty or Death, I roll a die, and for each command combat card, I roll six die. And for each symbol, I get to do something. So let's roll my six die here. So it's Cavalry, Infantry, uh, Saber, I can't do anything. I can do it with anything with flags and infantry. So let's do the infantry first. Um, hmm... Where are weaknesses? Artillery would be nice. Hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, hmm. Okay. I'm going to move this guy here. And Lee is two. So that's a... I've moved an infantry and a flag. I've got a flag, an infantry, and a cavalry. So I'll move this cavalry. One, two. And then I've got an infantry and a flag left. And this guy's going to fight. And he did move. Okay, and let's see. I've got an infantry and a cavalry. So we'll go infantry and... Oh, an infantry and a flag. Okay, and I'll move these prevent. Yeah. I'll move down here. I'm going to attack um, these guard units here. Uh, let's put an attacker marker. Okay. Now these guys have moved, so the Lee thing. He's at f um, two dice. And then he gets a one, so he's got three dice. The Lee thing kind of ignores the whole movement, so three dice. Oh, wait, does that give me an extra die? I get an extra die, and I get an extra combat marker. Okay, let's get my combat marker while I'm thinking of it. And uh, I get an extra die. So what was I said? I said there's a two plus three plus Lee is four. So four die. Artillery, flag, sabers, cavalry. So the artillery takes one. Um, the sabers will take one because I'm... I think the sabers that riflemen give you sabers. They do. Okay. So, takes a hit from the Sabres. And, uh, what was the other one? Artillery, flags, Sabres, and and then the flag. Okay. Uh, he can ignore the flag. Okay. Now then, green down here. He's at full strength. So, that's a two. Plus a one is a three. Plus green is four. So, that's a... Flag, Cavalry, Artillery, and Sabres. Okay, the Sabres hits. That's a... Guard unit takes a hit. They ignore the flag. And that's it. Okay, so... He stood his ground. I think he's going to fire back. So he gets a uh, one dice. Or no, he gets a... He's a guard unit, so he gets a three die. And... Leslie will give him four. So... Artillery, infantry, flag, and sabers. Okay, the sabers counts. Oh, I gotta see if Leslie made it. He took he took a hit, so nope, he didn't. Okay. So now fighting back to green. Flag, cavalry, artillery, and sabers. So there's their sabers. And then the flag he can ignore. So that's the battle back. Um and then okay, they take one, so let's see if Les if Green makes it. Green makes it. Okay, Mad Anthony is still mad. And that would be the end of the American turn. We go to the Brits' turn. Mm -hmm. Advance left, advance right. My gosh. I will use my leader initiative and I will use my advance right. Um, actually, I'm going to probe the left. Let's do that. One, two, three, six. Let's, okay, there's a probe left. And then a leader initiative. And we're going to use uh, the grenadier here with Cornwallis to move forward and um, he's gonna try to fight try to shoot up on that hill 
Let's see. There's your attacker marker. Okay, there's your leader initiative. And it does not give you a bonus. Okay, that's fine. And then probe left. Uh, let's see. That's with two. I'll use this guy and move him. And he will fight. And then this guy will fight. And let's see here. And then I get a combat card. So we'll get my British combat card. Okay, another leader initiative. Okay, so that's two, two, one. He can shoot with a, or I'm sorry, three, two, one, three, two, one. So he's got one dice here. He gets an extra one for Cornwallis. So that's two die. Infantry and flag. Okay, nothing there. Oh, he's got a flag check. Oh, we ignore a flag because he's on a hill. Okay, there's a melee here. And uh, that's going to be a three, four dice. Cavalry, sabers, cavalry, cavalry. Okay, so the sabers hits. We check and see if green makes it. Sabers flag. Nope. Okay, these grenadiers are going to fire three, two, and they just get two. Yeah, flag and infantry. Enough to take another hit. Let's see how green does. Sabers. Oh my gosh, two sabers. Green just got killed. So Mad Anthony is now Dead Anthony. And that is the end of the British uh, turn. Now the British are sitting at uh, 5, 6, 2, 3. So the, it's looking a little bit uh, dicey for the Continentals. Let's go with the Continentals. Let's see. Rally. Um... Let's try and advance the center, and um, I think continental leadership looks good too. Ah, let's go back. Hold on. Let's let's do our continental leadership because that gives us a combat card, which we can sorely use right now. Ah, for the militia. Those militia aren't... We don't even have any militia. Okay. So play in lieu of the combat card. Now, issue one leader, and the leader and up to four units can move or fight. A unit with the leader is also ordered, as long as it remains with the unit. After movement... Okay, so we're going to have one, two, three, four. They have to be adjacent, so... We'll move this guy here. One, two. He can fire. And three, four. Okay. He can fire. Attacker marker. That guy can fire down there. This guy can fire. Attacker marker. And this guy can melee. Attacker marker. Okie doke. Oh, well, let's blast with the... Let's try to blast with the big guns here. So he's at... He's got two dice. He gets a cavalry and an artillery. Not enough to do anything. Okay, this guy, this light unit, can have, try. And it's one dice plus one plus one for Lafayette. So... Oh, plus... Okay, so he gets... He starts with one... We add one for being at full strength is two, and then the move in Lafayette will cancel each other out. So two dice. Sabres and artillery, nothing. Okay. Uh, this regular will move. He's at full strength, so this is two dice normally. Three dice, but two dice because he moved, so we roll two. Infantry and a flag. So the grenadiers take a hit, and uh, they ignore the flag because of Cornwallis, but we roll to see... Artillery or truly, no two sabers, so they survive. Okay, and then finally this melee here with Sterling. Oh, I'm just fighting my own unit. Never mind. <laughs> Forget it. Okay. And I drew, did I draw a combat? I drew a combat card. So we can discard this. We go to the Brits. And let's flip this over. 
Um, let's see. I need something on the the left still. We're going to do the advanced left again. I, I kind of want to try to bring out this, if I can try to get this guy out of here. And um, I'll play a leader initiative again. And let's do this. Okay. So I've got three units. Now I've only, I've got this guy here. And I'm going to try to fire down over here. And I think, well, yeah, I think I can do it. And then this guy is going to hang tight. And then this guy is going to melee. And that should be those. And then for my grenadiers, I'm going to move and activate there. Okay, so Cornwallis is going to go across the bridge and try to attack these regulars. And so we've got a Grenadier, which is three dice, plus Cornwallis is four dice. And then we subtract one for movement, which is three dice. Let's try to see what we do here with the regulars. And we got a flag, flag, and infantry. So first of all, we take our hit. Uh, they are pushed back with the two flags. And uh, then we got to see if they save. So they get three. They do not save. Okay, so they're eliminated. Then this these guard here will go with Leslie. And uh, the guard is three dice plus Leslie is four dice. Saber, infantry, flag, and cavalry. That's enough. Okay. And then um, these Grindir are going to try to fire. And with Grindir, it's three, two. So two dice to fire up there. Flag and cavalry, uh, we can, they have to move back, which kind of maybe saves their lives. We roll three dice, and they do not get a flag. And so they route from the battle. And that, my friends, is the end of the game. So basically, they just eventually eliminated that uh, group of units over on Combs Hill. So Washington lost that battle. It's kind of interesting how it is. I kind of like this. The more I'm getting used to it, I'm very slow at playing it, as you can tell. And uh, this video has taken a lot of work to make. But uh, anyway, it was kind of fun to play. I will be doing Savannah here. Hopefully get it out by Tuesday. Next week, uh, 1776. And then also every Tuesday for the next few weeks, I'll be doing a comparison of... Uh, this game and hold the line for the battles of the southern campaign so we'll be doing savannah campden kings mountain uh cowpens and guileford courthouse so anyway thanks for sticking with me kind of say it's a long been a long long video but uh, i sure appreciate you guys i'll talk to you later bye